I'm going to be um, doing it from Google um, presentation. All this stuff is from a Google presentation from the Google Drive. And if you haven't done anything with that, that's how we create the um, uh, laptop sign up sheet. Mm -hmm. Is through Google, so you, then you share it and it updates. What's nice about Google is you're getting a place that has the internet, you can get into Google Chrome, or it doesn't even have to be to Google Chrome to be in uh, Internet Explorer. You get in and you got Google Drive. So wherever your drives, these are all files that I've created in Google Drive. And you can also do PowerPoints, but your Microsoft stuff, it translates. Because your Excel translate to a spreadsheet, your Word documents translate into a document, your PowerPoints translate to presentations, and I've actually made this on a PowerPoint, but I did it through presentation through the Google Drive. So <coughs> you don't need it. So we will start from here. Like presentation. I'm wearing so this is what we're going to go over. We're going to go over projects. Well, first session, which is here. Projector, Windows 7 tips and tricks. Um, the snipping tool, which you can grab. Oh, you grabbed it. Okay. Um, so, starting off with projector. Most of you probably know this, but sometimes they go into rooms and they don't know it. But yeah. you have at the bottom a thing called freeze. Sometimes it uh, is called a different name depending on your thing. But when you do that, it freezes your stuff. You can have it be whatever is up there, and then you can go and do your roll or go play solitaire or whatever you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kids won't see it up on the board there. So. The other thing is you got pit mute. Sometimes, depending again on the mute, um, it, it might be mute screen on your thing, but basically it kills. So, so what is interesting about that, it does not decrease or help your bulb light at all. Your bulb is still counting hours. Yeah. Interesting on that. So yeah. it's not actually a bulb saver. I'm sure that it probably helps the heat of it. But, yeah. um, um, but yeah, if you would actually look and you would do the the, the hours, uh, and who knows what it does to the bulb. It might help the bulb's life. Who knows? But then you got a plus and a minus that you can enlarge the screen or reduce the screen. So that helps when you have your writing. Um, tips on bulb. Um, don't ever cover this up with your plastic lens. That used to be a popular thing. And the reason behind that is because this thing is extremely hot. And that's the quickest way for your bolt to go out. It's not that big a deal. As big a deal. It used to be 300 bucks to change the bolt out. District now actually does it free. Well, it's not free for It's free for us. us. <laughs> they are just replacing them. Before they started to do that halfway through the year, um, I had found a place that's about 80 bucks for a bulb. So um, it's not bad. I mean, it feel a lot better to change out a bulb. Um, the other thing that helps your bulb is to actually don't keep on turning on and off. Oh, really? The best thing is turn it on at the end of the day, turn it off when you're done at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. so don't turn it into that oops. <laughs> wow. So, back here. Sorry. Uh, I didn't hear too far on how to run the um, presentation, but don't turn it turned off. Okay? So that's something that's, that actually helps your bulb life. Why is that? If you're going to be three the, hours. The, well, maybe, yeah, if you're like, like 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock, you might turn it off then. But if, if it's you know, 
10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, probably keep, keep going. Mm -hmm. um, the, just the power that go, has to go through to get the bulb on really decreases that filament. The it's other so thing, go ahead. It's kind of like that with our fluorescent light bulbs. If you keep turning them off and on during the day, they're actually wasting more energy and it causes it to burn up faster. Mm -hmm. so, Right. Yeah, yeah. And who knows about cars these days? When I was growing up, they always told you to shut off your car. Now they're telling you actually, it doesn't matter. I don't know what the latest is. <laughs> Eco mode is the other thing. If you change it into, you go to your menu and you go and change it in setups to um, lamp mode. And you change lamp mode into eco mode. It differs just a little bit, and that it changes the, the from 100 percent. I believe it is uh, to 85 percent. I wonder if mine is in eco mode because it just seems. I would have gone through when we were having major problems because when we when it was 300 bucks, um, I was having to replace when the bulb or the lamp meter, it tells you your percent, and we're, it, this is 90% of use, it has one, it's but used 1% of its use, um, and it would be in the 80%, so it would only use 15%, and it would, the ball would die, and that's when I made up these rules for how you can increase the ball, but it hasn't been ever since I've actually done that, and people have done a pretty good job of I think this was probably the biggest one, don't cover the lens, was the biggest one, but then turning it off. I had gone through and went and changed everything into eco mode at night or that week. So, any comments on projectors? Delilah and Paula, please come to the This stuff's new to me just because I haven't got a real yeah. good chance to really mess around with any of the smart board or anything. Right. I, uh, Something that the teachers don't really understand is that they talk to me that their their smart board is not working, <laughs> and then it's not the smart board that's not working; it's the projector that's not working. Your projector goes and works off the computer. Your connection is to the computer, so if I don't have to have anything projecting on my screen. Like obviously, it helps to know what I'm pushing, but I don't have to have anything on projecting on screen and I can be pushing around and I could be doing all sorts of things on the computer. There is no correlation to what's on the screen from the projector to what's on. Just sign. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, what was your, your but, uh, the zoom thing that was something I always do. I go back to my computer and I try to change the font of my from my work. Right. And, yeah. And that, no, that was very valuable. <laughs> the other thing that I, it depends on your remote. Some of them let you freeze it and then zoom it in and out. Mm -hmm. um, this one, I don't think. I, I don't know what happened. Uh, so, if you're yeah. pointing at the projector, I am. A lot okay. of people project point it at the at screen. The smart but again, it's the projector that this runs. Okay, so my projector is mounted to the mm -hmm. ceiling. And then I'm behind it. The other thing. And so where should I? The other thing is the projector um, um, <coughs> infrared is right here and right back here, and it's a flat plane. And like so, you have it mounted, and you go up to it underneath it. It doesn't get the like, same. Okay. So you have to back away and get to where it's actually getting. It was interesting when we had it uh, on the auditorium. Mounted on the, in the auditorium, I had to go clear behind the, the screen and do my stuff behind the little okay. um, screen to actually because it was so high up you couldn't. It wouldn't That's see helpful that. to know because I'm I'm usually pointing. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that you actually do have on your projector is you have a mouse that you can do a left and right mouse click on. But it's not going to work unless you have the little controller that has it. And what it is, is it's a little tiny 
thing that's about this long and just has a infrared thing at the end and you can use your projector um, remote as your mouse click button, right? Mouse click. And you can use your um, bars here as a mouse. How would that be possible? Um, well, if you have, a, obviously when you have a smart board, this is your mouse. Mm -hmm. But if you were presenting in the back of the room, you, you actually see them do that quite a bit at presentations okay. so in the library and stuff like that. I got a wireless mouse, so that's what I, I carry around my wireless mouse with me, and that's how I've been doing it. Right. Sure. And I worked great. My smart board doesn't work right. We've, we've, I was going to call Kayla and see if she could come out. She was, I don't know if she was supposed to be in the building today. But. It's my guys. <laughs> so that would be, otherwise, I'm stuck behind. Yes. Right, doing all that. So, cool. anything else on projectors? Okay, Windows tips and tricks. Shake your desktop. Okay, and I'm going to do it here because I don't. I'm not that good at um, the screen. But when you have something on your screen, you can come up to the top and click and hold, and you can shake it. Uh, it's a whole lot better with a mouse. Let's try it here. You see how that other part disappeared? Okay. That is so the stuff behind it disappears when you shake the mouse, basically. And it's probably doing that because it's a maximum. Why do they want to do that? Um, Instead of just minimizing things. It gets rid of the clutter behind. When I was actually reading all the different stuff on the, on the shake, um, it makes it so that the clutter behind um, you, and a lot of people don't like that clutter that's behind. You actually can do the same thing by holding down the mouse, um, or the Windows icon on your keyboard, and then hitting D takes you back to your desktop. The shaking screen gets rid of everything except for the one screen you're on. So, I mean, it's more than just minimizing it? Like it just totally went away? Or it's down here somewhere that you can pull back? Yeah, well, yeah, it's just down here. So it's like minimizing everything at once? Right. At once. Okay. So if I have this up, and I have this up, and then I have mm -hmm. something like that, I actually have three screens. People sometimes don't like that. So you can do the shape thing, or you can do the Windows D, and it minimizes everything. If you do the other one, it just gets rid of everything except for the one you're shaping. So, kind of a cool little thing. Um, don't know how to go to the actual slide. So I'm gonna go from here. Searching the internet with the start menu. You can always open up Internet Explorer or um, Google Chrome or whatever and do a search, but if you do this um, searching with your, the start menu, you can come down here and you can search for, that's all type in butterfly, and you look at the bottom down here and it says search the internet. Okay, so if I type in the rest of butterfly, I can hit the search for internet stuff and it will bring up ah, cool. stuff. So you can use this as your search. Mm -hmm. um, of course, again, you can do the same thing up here, but just kind of one less step. <laughs> and to do that, That's cool. to do that, you go into your start menu and you type this in right here, G-E-E-E-I-T dot. In a C, which this is actually a really cool thing to do. What do you type that in it? At the right, search. just same thing at the search. Search. C okay. e e Does it need to be caps like that? No. And then just enter? And then enter. I might have 
here that you type that in. I'll look that up again. But you're going to go into what you'll bring up a screen, and then you type in user configuration, administrative um, template, and um, the start menu of task. And you click on like, add search internet link to the start menu. Did you just search for that? I think there's something wrong right there. But that's basically how you get whenever you type in how you can use your that bar and search for your internet. Okay? Can you find that out? Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll send this out. This PowerPoint out actually I'll search search it start the actual PowerPoint. <coughs> So it's P instead of GP. Now, if I would go and open up the 
let's say I open up a Word document. And opening up the Word document, and I hit paste. It's basically just took it took, takes a picture of your screen, oh, and then you can do all like, sorts of things with that. that. Okay. Oh. Now, if you have your your computer split put in split screen, what will happen is it will show both screens there. Uh -huh. So when you do that. So that's just on the side that you can do. You can actually do the same thing through um, one of the uh, Microsoft Office um, stuff. Uh, why am I, I'm, <coughs> there's a track of what it is. It is. OneNote. If you actually go into OneNote um, and then um, and just open up OneNote, you just have to do it one time, and then and you can do a Windows key S, and now I have that little thing right up, the little plus sign in the middle of the screen. If I click and hold anything that I have there, it just took a screenshot of it. And if I go back into Microsoft Word or whatever, and I do a paste, it automatically puts that in there. So, but everything that I just showed you is actually done in that snipping tool. Okay, so where do you find the snipping tool? It's if you go into the start menu and all programs and accessories. There is a snipping tool right there. Yeah, I open that up, and you see that little box right here. And right now I have the scissors, which basically means that I'm going to, I can um, hold whatever that's on my screen. I'm just going to take my, do that like that. And it does the same thing. So if I go into a Outlook uh, page or whatever, I go to paste, and you see down here, that picture was on there. I have it open still, so it's already open. If I change that, actually, sorry. If I change it, I can actually just do the whole screen, so the whole screen. I can do um, the uh, free form. So and it just took, took out a chunk of whatever I just did. So now when you um, snip it, that's different than the others, is it brought up this window that you actually have. And if you wanted to, to do something with that, like save it. And it, it allows you, it kind of brings it up and that allows you to do some things with it as far as saving it or send it right away. So it has a little bit more features than just your plain print screen or whatever. So that is the end of our session. So you like you can. You, email it, you can put it in the documents, you can save it for files for later. Questions? On the... Oh, never mind. Got it? Yeah.